It's good day to brew, baby. What is up, huge bitch boy Millsy, our hometown commander. Back for another set of Millsy brews. Show over my version 1.0 deck list of the commander for us. My quest to brew the magic world. As always, the deck list is going to be down in the description for you below. As well as, I would appreciate any interaction you can do with the video. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever you can do. I would appreciate it. Today, we are continuing our Modern Horizons 3 content. Um, last week was pre-con week. It was a ton of fun. And I'm really excited to get into the uh, commanders of the set and start covering them. And today we're going to start with my boy, Johnny. Johnny is back in a Johnny Nicotl Pariah, a Boros Cats commander in a lot of ways. And that's kind of how we brewed the deck. Um, Cat Tribal focusing on tokens as well when we can. Um, there are a lot of Johnny Planeswalker cards, including the backside of this one. So we do have a little bit of a Super Friends theme. And then... Well, any creature deck that's in these colors wants to do one thing, and that's get into combat and in the game, and that's what we're going to look to do. But a Johnny Nakatal Pariah is a two mana one two cat warrior that, when it comes in, makes a two one cat warrior creature token, which, for the record, is a great rate by itself. This is two creatures for two mana, which feels great. And then you're going to be actively trying to get rid of a cat because whenever it says whenever one or more other cats you control die, you may exile a Johnny and return it transformed under its owner's control. Comes back in his three mana planeswalker plus two. You can put a counter in each cat you control, which is a great ability. For zero, you can make another cat warrior uh, creature token. And when you do, if you control a red permanent other than a Johnny, you deal damage equal to the number of creatures you control to any target, which is a great ability that can hit players, that can hit a lot of things, and I like it. And then the minus four is kind of a fun one sided board wipe. Each opponent chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the non-land permanents they control and sacrifices the rest. So, kind of interesting little one-sided board wipe to kind of push our opponents back as we go. Well, let's start with the part of the deck that probably is the most important, and that's that's the cats, right? We we, we care about putting plus and plus and counter on all our cats, and we want cats that also make tokens, because we're trying to get as many creatures as we can. Brimaz fits really well. Whenever it attacks, you get a token. Whenever it blocks, you get a token. It's a great 3-4 body on its own. Kamba Kyle Regent says that being in your upkeep, you make a 2-2 cat for each equipment attached to it. We are playing a few equipment uh, for Kemba in the deck. This this is a, a little bit different than like a Miri deck or something like that where you'd play a lot more of him. I think you could play more, and I think it still would be good in its own right. Um, but I decided to try to put enough in the deck so that Kemba would have enough equipment to be around whenever you see it. Lean and War Leader makes two cats on attack that are tapped and attacking, which is pretty cool in its own right. We're playing that new Ocelot Pride, a card that I think is a slam dunk in this deck. Um, first Strike and Life Link, the beginning your end step. If you gain life this turn, you can put a 1 1 cat on the battlefield. And if we have the City's Blessings, so we're at 10 permanents overall, then uh, we get to make a token of every copy of every token that came in this turn, which should be a lot if we can get this going, and I think will be really helpful. The nice part about a Johnny's second ability is that it's not a damage for each cat you control. It's a damage for each creature you control, meaning that if some of our cats, like Prob of the Steel Legion over there on the right, which can make soldier tokens, and some of our other cats that make other things, we can still benefit from them instead of just needing them just to be cats. Uh, O'Hare Talk is our honorary cat here, tripling the amount of creature tokens we would make and really, really synergizing with that middle ability for a Johnny. Regal Caracal makes uh, two cats when it comes in and gives all of our cats plus one, plus one, and lifelink. That is a great ability. It's going to help keep us alive to the mid-game as we uh, go wide on our board. White Sun Zenith is a really fun one, making X2-2 two, two cats and then shuffling it back into our library. Hopefully we can make a lot of cat counter uh, cat tokens this way and build our board going wide. And then Fellow Dar Retreat does what everything we want it to. Whenever land comes in, we can either get a cat... Or we can put a counter on all of our creatures and they get Vigilance. I like Feldar Retreat a lot, especially if you're going wide, because it kind of gives you your choice. Do you want another token and kind of build your board up? Or do you want that counter on every creature you control, whether they have haste, whether they're attacking, it doesn't matter. And you can just build that uh, for the future. Then they get Vigilance, which means maybe you have a bunch of free attacks you can take and get some chip damage. And Johnny Steadfast, getting into our Super Friends portion, um... A four mana, four loyalty commander, or a planeswalker. Plus one, gives up to one target creature, plus one, plus one, and first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. The minus two puts a counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter to the planeswalker control. A great ability when we have um, the six of Johnny planeswalkers we're playing in the deck. And the minus seven ultimate says, if a source you control would deal damage to you or a planeswalker you control, prevent all but one of that damage. So protecting our... Um, 
us and our Planeswalkers. Johnny, Adversary of Tyrants, putting a counter up to two target creatures on the plus one. The minus two is going to bring some creatures back from our graveyard, which is great since a lot of our cats are pretty low on the mana value scale. And then the minus seven says it being a combo, being each your end steps, but three one one cat creature tokens with lifelink out of that field, which is great. Again, a ways to make more tokens and take advantage of our board. A Johnny Call of the Pride for three mana, plus one plus one counter on one creature for the plus one. And the minus three gives a creature flying and double strike, which might be a way to get a big attack to one of our opponents. And then the minus eight making X two two white cat creature tokens where X is your life total, a fun ultimate, and can be brutal if we can pair this with some of the haste effects we have in the deck. A Johnny Strength of the Pride, plus one gains life equal to the number of creatures we control, plus the number of planeswalkers we control. Minus two makes into Johnny's Pride, which gets bigger as we gain life. And for zero, if we have at least 15 more life than your starting life total, um, exile a Johnny Strength of the Pride in each artifact and creature your opponent's control. So big one-sided board wipe. We have to get rid of Strength of the Pride to do it, but we're more than happy to do it, especially if we can get that life and get it going. And then Johnny Wise Counselor, which was the, um, I believe, the face commander of a Planeswalker deck back when those existed, plus one life for each creature you control. Again, getting this lifelink theme that we have going on. Creatures getting plus two, plus two, and then... Putting X plus one plus one creature on target creature where X is your life total. Uh, a fun ultimate, but I think we're there really for these these pluses that gain us life, so we can make sure that we're keeping ourselves stout as we're getting into combat. The Chain Veil makes a ton of sense in a deck like this, where we have four or five or six all jo uh, a Johnny Planeswalkers in the deck, plus a Planeswalker in the command zone. So being your end step, we didn't activate a loyalty ability of a Planeswalker this turn, you lose two life. And for four, for each of our Planeswalkers, we can do one of their abilities again, which is a great ability. And something that if we can get multiple of our Johnny Planeswalkers at the same time, can be really useful. And then, since we're in these two colors and we're playing Planeswalkers, and we have a Planeswalker in the command zone, we can try out both Elspeth's talent and Rowan's talent. These were from the uh, March of the Machine Commander uh, set. And both of these are really good. You put them on a Planeswalker, it gives them an extra ability, and then it gives them a triggered ability whenever that Planeswalker uses an ability. So our Elspeth's talent gives that Planeswalker the ability to make three soldiers. And whenever you activate a low to ability of the Chanted Planeswalker, uh, creatures get plus two plus two vigilance, a great ability and probably one of my favorites of the two. And then Rowan's Talon gives the ability to give a creature first strike and trample and plus two plus so. But it says, whenever you activate the low to ability of Enchanted Planeswalker, copy that ability and may choose a target for the copy, which could be brutal with a Johnny's uh, minus two, right? And, and dealing damage to a target, basically allowing you to do damage to two things. So I think both of them have their great um, uses, especially on a Johnny since he's sitting in the command zone. But at the end of the day, we're going to go wide, but we got to get stuck in. And I think there's a lot of great ways in Boros to do that. We can play a Rowis, which is going to help protect our creatures in combat so they can't be uh, destroyed by chump blocking and things like that, giving them menace as well. Just all gold main can uh, make a big attack and give all creatures plus X plus X to the end of turn where X is the number of attacking creatures we have, which could be a great ability if we're getting a free attack in. Having that be an instant speed is great. King of the Pride can buff all other cats, making all of our 1-1s into 3-2s and make them just a little bit more difficult to deal with. Skyhunter Strike Force, giving all of our creatures melee, which is a great ability if we can attack every combat. If we can attack every opponent, giving our creatures plus 3 plus 3 could be great. Now, as long as we control a Johnny, then all of our creatures have it. Otherwise, Skyhunter Strike Force will be attacking, hopefully, as a 5-5. Door, Door Destinies play a little bit into the um, tribal theme of the deck, putting a charge counter on it every time we cast a cat in this scenario, and then they get bigger for each charge counter on it. Just a great way to, if we could see it early in the game, to buff it up and get our whole board bigger and bigger. Flogging the White Tree to protect a Johnny when it's on its front side. Otherwise, just give everything plus one, plus one. And we do have a, a decent amount of uh, legendary cats in the deck, so they will get that plus two, plus one, and ward one. And getting in some of the other stuff, Intangible Virtue to give all of our tokens vigilance so that they can attack and block. Shared Animosity, a great card for red decks when they're attacking, making them hit harder, and especially those you know, those one or two that are going to leak through are going to hit hard. And then War Leader's Call will pair a little bit of a buff with a little bit of damage every time we make a tokens we are st also playing things like impact tremors but um i think the buffing is more important because we want to still be getting into combat and utilizing the plus one plus one counters and the and the life we're gaining and all that to really leverage for damage to our opponents but i've said it before on the show and i'll say it again no decks ever complete 
this being my version 1.0 version of the deck, there's probably some things we'd learn in testing. And these are three cards that I had to cut, but I really would like to put back. Group Born Defenses makes a ton of sense. Another protection spell. The deck already has a few, but you never can turn it down in a creature deck, especially when people are going to be trying to board wipe you back to the Stone Age. Populate, creatures get indestructible. Pick a token, get another one of it, give all your creatures destructible. It feels good. Um, and uh, I'm playing a teeny bit more expensive protections, uh, Clever Concealment, Flare of Fortitude, um, Flawless Maneuver. But if you want just one more, uh, sorry, uh, Boros, um, Boros Term as well. But if you want another one, I think we're born by P. Worth It. Glimmer Lens just seems interesting, giving... Um, Whenever one of their creatures attack, draw a card and be able to equip on. This is another one for Kemba. Kemba also has another one in Kemba's banner that can give it a buff for the number of creatures you control that share a type, uh, or every creature you control, which is another great enchant uh, equipment as well. Just wait for you to kind of add more there. And, so, and then sort of Hearth and Home. Since we have a couple cats that do things on ETB, I thought it might be fun to put Hearth and Home in and blink some of our cats that make cats when they enter the battlefield. Uh, this also could be a way to... Um, flip a Johnny back over if we ever needed to. Uh, or, sorry, um, if we wanted to get another token off of Johnny when he's on the front side, we could always, you know, blink him, come back in and get another uh, cat, which which could be good as well. But, again, it just gets you that um, basic land as well, which is pretty darn useful. Let's get into our play tests. Um, here we've got a four-lander with Kemba, uh, Healer of the Pride, and an Impact Tremors. So, a great-looking start. We'll get that... Mountain down so that Clifftop Retreat can come in untapped. And then turn two, we'll get the Clifftop Retreat done and they get a Johnny. And with the Johnny being two mana, we want to make sure we get it down right away. Now we have that Ked token beside it. We will see what we can do here. Turn three. Turn three, I don't really see much else probably want to do besides get Kemba down. We don't have any equipment yet, but that's perfectly okay. Try to swing maybe the Cat Warrior in somewhere it could die. Uh, if it doesn't, no no problem. Obviously, we don't want a Johnny to attack in and die, but we really want this token to attack and die. I will assume for the purposes of this playtest that I found a way to get that cat to die, and we'll just go ahead and turn over um, a Johnny. I think this turn I would just uh, zero it to make another token, and then we don't have another red permanent, so we're not going to deal any damage, but just replace that token, make sure it's there, and now that we got a Johnny flipped over, uh, we could start using it more next turn. This turn, we can get a red um, permanent down in that Impact Tremors if we want to. I think probably Talisman Impact Tremors, and we can hold up that Path to Exile if we see something maybe scary on the board. And then I would probably, I would go ahead and zero um, a Johnny again, making another Cat Warrior, and now we can deal three to something. Whether it's somebody or somebody's creature, I feel like it's probably worth there, and then everybody would take one off of the impact tremors uh, effect. So now we got the tremors set up, which could be fun in the future if we can find some more ways to make more turkin turkins tokens. Uh, turn five here, I guess we'll go healer of the pride. Whenever another creature ETB is under your control, we gain two life. And I think I would probably zero. Uh, uh, so, oh jeez, I'd probably um, zero Johnny here again. Damage to our opponent, two life to us. Each of our opponents, two life to us, and then ping somebody for five. So I think we're just doing a great job at that. And I like this now because we'll have Clever Concealment up to protect the board. It kind of, um, I think probably next turn I'd probably look to put a counter on everything now that we've got a good solid board state going on. I think we just need to get there. And then same thing this turn, we can actually keep that Talisman and Conviction up for um, Path to Exile. We'll go one more turn. Mountain... We'll go with the Signet, and here I'd probably go up. Well, let's think about this. I could go get the counters on all my cats. Five counters, you know, is, is pretty good. I could also zero, get a damage on everybody, gain two life, and nuke somebody for six. That doesn't seem bad either. I think this is the point where we got to try to decide what we're going to do. I mean, I like the idea of the Impact Tremors and gaining me a life. So that's probably what I'd do. I mean, our cat warriors can start attacking if there's if we have a safe place for them. Otherwise, um, I would just wait till we can start plussing up a Johnny. And so I think from this point, we're looking to draw some more cats, looking for maybe some more buff, some of our buff enchantments. Just get a good attack in and kind of translate this wide board into some combat. Let's go for another play test. 
a three lander with Flare Fortitude, Flowering of the White Tree, Brimaz, and Generous Gift. So we have a way to cast Brimaz, which is great. We got enough mana. Flowering, great. Flare of Fortitude is great. I like this one. This one could be good. So turn one, we're going to play that Fear Comes Snarl. I mean, we can, we can show the planes, but I mean, we really kind of have no reason to bring it in uh, untapped. I mean, we have nothing to do. So I guess that would be up to us if that's what we want to do. Turn two here, though. We'll play that planes. Remember, we need the planes for Minas Tirith to come in untapped, and I would just get a Johnny down here now. Remember, we want to get down a Johnny uh, as quickly as possible so we can get that. Jeez. So we can get that cat, and we can potentially get it to die. Now, of course, if someone attacks us, we'll happily block with that cat, but um, obviously with it not having haste, not much we can do there. We'll get the Minas Tirith down. Now it's actually going to come in um, untapped since we have that planes. Or sorry, because it's a legendary creature. I apologize. I completely misremembered that. But I think I there's a couple lines here. We could go Roar of Resistance and get Masterwork down for later to get it to be bigger. We could get Brimaz down. Start making extra tokens when we attack and block. We could get the White Tree down. I kind of like the idea of just getting Brimaz down here. Trying to send this warrior into somebody. Let's say for the purposes of this game that a Sigmund doesn't block it. So we need to try to, you know, get get a Johnny stuck in somewhere. But now Brimaz, you know, is going to be a great attacker for us and a great blocker, getting us tokens every time. Let's go four mana here. Feldar Retreat would make sense. Flowering of the White Tree plus Roar Resistance would make sense, giving our tokens some haste and buffing our board for the future. I like Stoneforge Masterwork being a, um, a, uh, a great thing I'd love to put on something like Brimaz, you know, to give it a big buff and get those tokens every time it attacks. You know, Faladar Retreat probably would make sense as well. I'm not entirely sure here. I mean, my gut tells me Flowering plus Roar. Just so that way, if we can flip this Ajani, we can start getting good value. And I'd probably take a swing here with at least Brimaz to get that 1-1 one, one Cat Soldier. Again, I'd love to say for the purpose of this game that someone would block our Cat Warrior and let Ajani flip. So we'll just, again, for the purposes of making it easy, just say that somebody does um, do that. I mean... Our opponents may feel like they may not want to because it would it would just benefit us. But I would just make that Cat Warrior and dome somebody for three because I do have another red permanent. And um, now Brimaz uh, made us a blocker and we get that uh, Warrior from a Johnny. And I think we're looking good. And here we should have enough to block a Johnny if somebody tries to swing at it. Jessica's Will is a great draw. We could leave up a white, right, and have eight mana. That could lead us to Masterwork and Equip It and a Feldar Retreat, which could be interesting. So let's say we do that. Somebody has seven in their hand. Masterwork on Brimaz, Felidar Retreat. I would probably uh, zero a Johnny again here. I just, I like the ability to um, get that token and deal out some damage, especially when our tokens now have haste. So now the tokens can attack. And remember, they're... They're they're two they're three twos right now and this is a two two, but master or sorry, um, Brimaz is now a five five plus a three so it's an eight eight with vigilance that makes a token on attack. That's going to be hard to deal with. So I mean I would attack with it for sure. I mean I probably still attack with the tokens. I can't imagine I have a reason not to. We do have the Flare of Fortitude out, so we could sack Brimaz to protect the board if we really needed to. It's going to protect permanence and um, our life total. I guess that would be a nuclear option if needed. That turn, we might have had enough mana. We actually may have had enough mana to um, do the Roar Resistance to give them plus two plus so, but that's okay. We missed that one. We'll go one more turn. Arcane Sin is the draw. We would have loved to land there. But we'll get it down. My gut tells me now's the time to try to put some counters um, on everything. Take an attack here. Brimaz makes another token. You know, and uh, we could we could use Roar of Resistance here for a pretty big attack. I mean, these guys are three twos. These guys are two twos. With the Roar of Resistance, five twos and four twos. So good big attack on somebody. And I think here we just try to protect our board with the Flare. Keep using a Johnny's ability, probably to keep making the board state go wide. Hopefully, we don't lose Burmaz, but I think we're happy to in case we have to use the flare and kind of go 
from there. But let me know, what do you think about Johnny down in the comments section below? Um, it's an interesting deck, probably not what I think... I would want for my cat's decks. I think I still like Ren and Series, a cat commander, and I really like some of the some of the Selesnya options for cats. But of course can't run a Johnny in those decks. So let me know what you think about Johnny down in the comment section below and I will catch you guys next time.